Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So it's a very rainy day out today and unfortunately we won't be able to go out to the field to fly. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be staying outside and I'm going to show you something that you can do with your Tyrannus QX7 or X9D. So normally if you want to change the PIDs on your drone or your race quad, what you'd normally do is you go to Betaflight, hook up your uh, hook up your drone to your computer, go to the tuning tab and there, there you can change your PIDs, your rates, your expo and everything like that. But actually since, uh, since OpenTX 2.2 you can actually do this straight from your transmitter and I'm going to be showing you just exactly how to do that. Stay tuned. First things first, if you don't have the OpenTX companion uh, software yet, uh, head on over to OpenTX.org and then from there go to the download section and click on OpenTX 2.2.1 which is the latest release candidate, oh so, sorry, the latest release. And then the, the, you'd, you'd find at the bottom of the page uh, a link to the uh, installer and also to the SD card contents which uh, I'm downloading right now. Right, so once you have that installed, uh, we start uh, up our OpenTX companion and you'll be prompted to create some settings uh, profile settings for your transmitter but if you already had this installed previously then you, you probably have this already so choose your uh, choose your radio type then make sure that Lua is uh, checked and as well as uh, SQT5 font and then you can uh, you can choose your own custom splash screen and then right here uh, I'm choosing where I, I had my uh, SD card contents extracted and then I'm also going to create a backup folder so that all of the settings and models will be backed up whenever I, um, whenever I update my firmware. So I'm just gonna choose that. And then uh, I think this is all good. So we are just gonna be, uh, sorry, we want to enable this automatic backup before writing firmware. So just to make sure that uh, it's backed up before we uh, write our firmware. Now we want to check uh, the models and settings on our radio, but uh, for this you have to have your transmitter connected. So uh, to do that you need to have it in bootloader mode by putting, uh, pressing the uh, trim buttons towards the center and turning on your radio. And then uh, we, after plugging our radio into uh, to our PC, we click on radio models and settings from radio again, and you can see that uh, we have uh, the I have my models from my radio uh, up here on my OpenTX companion. So now we want to save this, uh, save these settings, just uh, so we have a backup. But again, um, it, we have already set it so that it does uh, the back backups automatically. But I just want to make make uh, extra sure, just to be safe on the safe side. So if you click on edit radio settings, you can also see all of the settings that you have on your radio, uh, all of your settings for your calibration trainer, and all of those uh, are all going to be included in, in that backup. So once we have that, we click on the downloads button. And let's check for uh, updates, firmware updates, and then we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna click on the download firmware button, and then choose where we're gonna save the uh, we're, we're gonna save the uh, the firmware. Right, uh, so it's just it's a very small file, so it's gonna take a short while to download. And then once we have that, we can now uh, actually perform our uh, firmware update, firmware update on our Tyrannus. So uh, you just have to load up the firmware file that you downloaded earlier, and then uh, and then the default settings should be okay. Just uh, confirm everything that you see on screen, and then just click Write to GX, and uh, it'll start writing. Uh, to your radio firmware. All right, once that's done, it'll say flashing done. Just close that up. We're just gonna go to the to our Tyrannus, which we can access for, for via our PC, and we're just gonna delete all of the 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 SD card contents. And then we just click on yes, just to make sure that we are uh, operating from a clean slate. And we click on a synchronized SD button. And then uh, we make sure that we have our uh, local folder where you have your SD card contents and then your radio folder all set up. And then just click OK. Uh, right here, I'm just uh, making sure that uh, the sync directions from, from the local to the radio, just to make sure that, uh, uh, that I have the latest SD card contents on my radio. 
So once that's done, I'm just I just want to make sure that I have my models and settings uh, on my radio. So uh, once I once I check that, it seems okay. I can now just close uh, close this up and close OpenTX. Now, if you downloaded the Amber uh, voice files, you can just copy the the sounds directory and just uh, copy that directly on your uh, on your radio. You might have to uh, overwrite uh, the files. And uh, once that's done, we just open uh, B the, the Lua script file, the zip file. Uh, I'll, link the, I'll link the download uh, file down in the, uh, down in the description. And then just go into the scripts and telemetry folder, copy bf.lua, then go over to your Tyrannus and then go to the scripts folder where you'll find a telemetry folder as well. You just paste that bf.lua file over there. And then uh, we, we click back, we go back to the zip file. We are also going to need the BF, the complete BF folder, uh, which is, can be found in the scripts, uh, scripts uh, folder in that zip file. We copy that whole folder, head on over back to, the, uh, to our Tyrannus and then paste that in. Now we're done. So what we just need to do is uh, make sure that your uh, free sky receiver is on the latest, uh, uh, the latest uh, firmware, just to make sure that uh, Lua scripts will work on your free sky receiver. Now there's, uh, they have a lot of different receivers on the free sky website. So do check it out at, at freesky-rc.com. In this case, I'm going to be uh, updating the firmware on my XSR. So. Uh, there's the XSR link and then uh, go down over to firmware. Nope, not that one. Um, sorry, that's the manual. Uh, we'll just hit back and then go to firmware. And then from there, we just click on download uh, the latest one, which supports uh, smart port transfer PID parameters. And that's what we're interested in. We just want to make sure that, uh, X, that our, our receiver supports uh, Lua scripts by uh, smart port. All right, once, uh, once the download finishes, uh, go over to the zip file, open that up, and then just copy the two, uh, the two files that in, in that zip file. Actually, you just need to copy one, uh, one of uh, wh whichever firmware you like. So it comes with two firmwares. Um, one is the FCC one, which is for, uh, for everyone else. And then one is the LBT, which is, uh, which is the EU firmware. And uh, that's just for uh, people in the EU. So we, here we have our XSR receiver, and uh, it's still on on the on the three D printed mount that I that is on my drone, and we are just interested in the first three pins, which is ground, five volts, and smart port. We're not going to be using the next two pins, which is audio and the S bus. So uh, I'm just going to use this uh, extra or this spare uh, connector that I have for for the XSR. Which is, it's just, it's just a five pin connector, and we're just going to be using the black, the red, and the yellow uh, wires. And we also need need this uh, servo connector, which uh, which we are going to be soldering to our uh, black, which is the ground, the red, which is the five volts, and yellow, uh, which is our smart port. So we're going to be uh, soldering that quickly. I'm not even gonna cut the wires because um, this is just going to be something I'm gonna be using one time. So uh, I want to be able to use this wire for something else the next time. So uh, let's go ahead and solder them solder them together. After you finish soldering the two connectors together, we just need to plug them in uh, to the bottom of the QX7 and uh, we just need to make sure that uh, the, bl the black wire is uh, to the left and then the smart port wire is to the right of the, of the port. So uh, after plugging that in, we also need to plug in the other side of the connector to our XSR and we are good to go. Next up, we need to go to our uh, Tyrannus uh, and hold the menu button to go to the radio setup. Click on page to go to the SD card contents. And then click on firmware where you can see the two firmware that we uploaded to the SD card. Hold the enter button and then click on flash external device and it'll start right into your XSR. And you'll notice that uh, the, the XSR starts flashing green and red uh, while it's riding. Now, it's gonna take a couple of minutes, but once it's done, uh, once it's done right into the, the firmware, uh, the XSR will uh, turn off uh, automatically. And uh, you can just unplug that and then uh, pop it back into your quad. Last thing we need to do is to set up Lua scripts on our, uh, on our transmitter. So we do that by going to the models uh, settings and then going to the last page, which is display. 
and then uh, choose, uh, choosing a blank screen uh, and then selecting script for the first parameter and then choosing BF for the second one. So we just click on exit and we should now have uh, our Luba scripts or sorry, you can change our PID settings by pressing on page. And then if you click on the menu button from here, you can uh, switch between the different uh, Betaflight uh, settings that you want to change, such as, such, such as rates, uh, the midpoints, and then uh, anti-gravity gain, anti-gravity threshold. And uh, if you also have your uh, smart audio setup, you can even set up your uh, your VTX from uh, from one of these screens, um, which is I think uh, it's probably the last one. Uh, here it is. Since I don't have a smart audio setup, uh, the the values appear just appear empty. But from here, you can just uh, click on any of those values and then just uh, change them straight from your transmitter. Alright, so I hope you found that video useful. If it was, click on the like button, hit on subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, keep building and keep flying.